From the beautiful campus of the Southern Asia Pacific Region of the Seventh Day Adventists here in Silang, Cavite, Philippines, I am April Pilotin Halasan. And I am A.L. Halasan. And welcome to Give, Give Me, Me the, the Bible, Bible, a series of studies that drew us to Jesus through His Word. Let us be blessed as we listen to His Word through Pastor Paulo. The title for today's message is Si Jesus Ang Tema ng Biblia. May God's blessings abound as we listen to His Word. Praise God for this golden opportunity for us to come together before God's holy throne to worship and glorify His name. Thank you so much for taking this precious time so you can thank God for what He has done to us and to our great nation we call the Philippines. With the images of fear and pain around us, it is without a doubt that to endorse all our uncertainties and worries to God is the most sound decision of all. Today, we are going to study, Finally, God Created You. It is wonderful to trace where we came from, and from there we will be directed as to where we are heading. Genesis 1.1 says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. What a blessing to know. What a blessing to realize that the beginning of this earth, the beginning of all these things, is God. We are so blessed to know that our beginning is with God. 
there is much wisdom in revisiting our origin. You know, I came across a Senate Bill 391 dated June 32004, authored by Senator S.R. Osmeña III on the 13th Congress of the Republic of the Philippines. It is a bill entitled An Act Increasing the Pension and Socioeconomic Benefits of Government Retirees and Veterans and for Other Purposes. And in the explanatory note, there is a Tagalog uh, word there that I really love and very much related to the one we are studying today. Ito po ay ang taong hindi marunong lumingon sa kanyang tinanggalingan ay hindi makakarating sa kanyang pinaruruunan. This is the popular translation of George Santayana's dictum. And in the first sentence, it says, Truly, we owe much of what we are as a nation today to the generations before us. Exactly what we are today also is really an, a something that we should look back because the beginning of man has a very good meaning in our existence. The book Genesis means beginning. Today, let us all together look back to where we came from. And in verse 2 of Genesis 1, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. The creation of light on the first day is reflexive of the nature of God, that He is a God of light. His presence in the beginning could assume that responsibility, total responsibility for removing the darkness. The light that God created on the very first day was not the sun or moon or star. It was a kind of light that emanates from God's revealed presence. Jesus Christ uses the word light as a metaphor to mean the truth, and that is in the New Testament. But we will never commit any theological blunder if we understood that the day one creation means the light of God's presence or the truth of His presence. We praise God for being a God of light. The earth was sustained with this light even without the sun, which only came, which was only created on day four. Verse five. And God called the day, the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Verse 9, And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Verse 10, And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and the herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit. That's why we have so many fruits today. We enjoy the fruits, seasonal fruits, year-round fruits. That is because God created this for us, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning we're the third day. So third day, we already enjoyed the creation of the fruits, the trees. 14. And God said, Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. 
and let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. On the fourth day, we have already the sun to rule the day. And we have darkness in the night. So we can sleep. Verse 21 says, So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing which, with which the water according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, and uh, so many things here, according to their kinds, and the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. So we have here the creation of the animals, and this is going to be on the sixth day. And God saw that it was good. And God saw that it was good. All these things. When he placed the animals, he can, you can see the birds. God saw that it was good. But verse 26, we, we read. There's another uh, gift that God extended to human beings. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. This is a very excellent plan. This man that God would be creating already had his job description. Imagine, even this man doesn't have any degree in basic management and accounting. This man was to be responsible. He had, he would have to do a lot of management responsibilities because that was the job description given by God to him. But he was not yet there. There was already the plan, the job description, but no creation yet of human. We call man. So we read, we will read Genesis 1, 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air. You know, God, he observes democracy. When he created man, there was a display of democratic procedure. Why? Because he referred it, let us make man. This word, this statement, this phrase simply means it is a proposal. Let us make man. And it is plural. And I would like here to identify the existence of Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Although there's no mention about three persons here. But at least we are very sure that it is more than one. Here, God is making a proposal. And since it is a proposal, it should be subjected to discussion, deliberation, and analysis to determine the pros and cons of the proposed outcome. It must be defended also. When you send a proposal, you have to defend that that proposal works. Probably we can hear some recommendations and some of these recommendations might be like this one. Mr. Chair or Mr. Speaker, we do not have much serious opposition in this group here. In your proposal to create man, we do not have much opposition. 
Our only concern, Mr. Chair, is the phrase in our image. You know, our opinion is that you can go ahead, you can create man, but please don't create man in your own image. It's so dangerous, Mr. Chair, to do that. What if this man that you will create will fully misrepresent you? What if in the latter times, this man that you would create would become so judgmental, unkind, unforgiving, unloving, impatient, and the likes? So, Mr. Chair, our recommendation is let us proceed with making man, or you proceed with making man, but this amendment should be recorded. Let us make man delete the phrase in our image. Well, the Bible is silent on how long or the, dur the duration in which this issue has taken had taken place. But we were only told what happened next. So we can imagine the deliberation. It was tabled on the floor. Then first reading, second reading, until it came to the third and final reading. And we know in verse 27, let us read all together. So God created man, male and female. He created man, mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female created he them. Praise the Lord. The decision to create man in God's image was accepted. It's, it, uh, it should be celebrated. I praise God, Lord, thank you that you created me in your image. God blessed them, verse 28, and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and in the birds of the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food and to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground. Everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. Verse 31. And God saw all that he had made. And it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning. The sixth day. Respected government leaders. Brothers and sisters. We are the crowning act of God's creation. You are so special. Because you were created in the image of God. Praise God. God created man, you and me, in his image. We are a representation of God. We are a reflection of God. We are not a product of accident. This image here is a character of God. It means that it is expected of each one of us to be like God in character, not in power or position. God could have created man after the image of a carabao. Or oh, God could have created man after the image of animals, monkeys, or... But no, no, no. God in his great love created you and me in his own image. That is the reason why God is running after us. He is very much interested in you and me. Because in you and me, there is that image of God. I now understand why heaven went bankrupt when their only treasure, Jesus Christ, left his royal throne and condescended unto men, born in a manger, persecuted, persecuted by Herod, had to flee to Egypt while still an infant, came back to Barangay Nazareth, modeled a life of humility, righteousness, and love. Perform his ministry, 
fed thousands, healed the sick, raised the dead, and eventually offered his life, shed his precious blood, and was buried, resurrected, and is soon coming back to take us home with him in a place where there is no more sickness, where there is no more death, where there is no more separation, we will be living in a place with all peace, joy, love, forevermore. All this God has done because He wanted to restore the image that has been lost in man because of sin. Nobody is perfect. Everybody is infected with sin. That's why we have this, all kinds of pain and suffering, but this will not last long. Very soon, Christ will come and take us home. We were supposed to die when we sinned, but he took our place. This is the God who is all compassionate. This is a God who is all forgiving. He owns this world. This world is no longer the same as in the beginning. But the good thing is that you and I are still here to make a difference. And the best part of what we learned is that when God created the universe, He was thinking about you. God has crowned you with this every per perfect finished product made by God for our joy, for our happiness. We have become stewards of eternal heritage. What a blessing. This beginning was the best Christmas story, the best gift from our Creator. Think of the birds He created. No human genius can make a bird, even a dead feather of a single bird. Think of a flower. No human wisdom could ever make the cheapest kind. Think of a tree. You can never make a tree. Only God can make a tree. Think of the pets inside your house that make you happy. Even if sin intruded into the happiness of God's people, still the beauty of what God has done still overrules. We still live in a wonderful world. We have what it takes to acknowledge God as the God of love. Think about the gift of God for you today, this Christmas. When you see yourself, you are a symbol of God's everlasting love. He created you in His image. He could have created you in different image, but God risked everything so that your identity is fixed to be God's holy trademark. Think of any part of your body. Think of the air you breath. That is free. If God would charge you for the air you breath, your billions cannot pay for it. But God has given it for free. A story is told of a man, a very old man, who shouted for joy after receiving his huge bill, after his hospitalization. And because of the oxygen that, he was, that was used to keep him alive, the bill became very large and huge. And he said, I am so happy because I am 93 years old. And I paid this much for my hospitalization. And I still have money to pay. You know, if God charged me the air I breathe every day since I was born, I don't know if I have money to pay. That is serious. That is true. There are so many things around us that are gifts from God. Probably we can just overlook some of them and we do not pause and give thanks to God. But this time, we want to celebrate this early days of Christmas 2020, December 2020, in gratefulness, in thanksgiving, and with a thankful heart. Brothers and sisters, we owe everything to God. What we have and what we are, who we have and who we are, is from God. God invites you to give your heart to Him now. Give Him a chance to recreate you just as God offers the same to me and to all of us. You can indicate right now. Please indicate your big yes, Lord, by waving your hands on your screen. And I will offer a thanksgiving prayer for all. 
it is God's pleasure to acknowledge Him, that we belong to Him, and we live in a place that we can call, This is my Father's Word. Father in heaven, please accept our commitment. Please bless all our government leaders and everyone watching this program right now. May your Holy Spirit dwell permanently in our hearts and direct us in all our ways to bring glory to your name. Please, Father in heaven, heal the world. Please heal our nation and unite us to love you, to serve you, and we thank you that we are created in your image. And because of that, we can continue to love you and your interest in us will continue. Please accept this worship and praise. In your precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Now, it's, it's quiz time. time. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be having two questions for uh, this program. May I give you the mechanics of this uh, quiz time? First, give us your answer, followed by your name, and then your address to this, to this phone number. Please ready your cell phones. 0917-5020416. Again, 0917-5020416. Answer, followed by your name, and then your address. Please do not call this number. Just send in your answers to this number. Please ready your phones. For the first question, saan makikita ang bersikulong ito? At siya ay manganganak ng isang lalaki at ang pangalan ng itatawag sa kanya ay Jesus. We will be repeating this question again. At siya ay manganganak ng isang lalaki at ang pangalan ng itatawag sa kanya ay Jesus. For the second question, this time you may fill in the blank. Sa pasimula, ay salita at ang salita ay blank. Ulitin po natin, ang sagot niyo po ay nasa blank. Sa pasimula ay salita at ang salita ay blank. for following this program. For more inspiring programs, please log on to our websites www.ssd.org hopetv.org May we always pray to God. Stay with God. And live for, for God. God.